how did I help a family of seven do their estate plan? Hi, I'm Tanya Hendricks, Huntsville Estate Planning Warrior, and this is a case study on how I helped a family of seven, a, a married couple with five children, do their estate plan to put their family at ease and ensure um, stability and structure and peace of mind for their family should the uh, unexpected happen or should they pass away while their children are young. That's a question that many people have. What happens to my kids if I'm young? And that's what was facing this family as well. And so after talking with the family, uh, after doing the whole um, interview with them, we just we developed a legal strategy that would be best for them. Obviously, the number one priority is the children. Who will take care of the children? So that position is called a guardian. And we had to determine who would be the guardian. And one of their children is old enough to take in the kids. So we named that person as the guardian over the younger children. But what happens if he's not available? What happens if he passes away while they're still young? So you have to have a backup plan. You, just, you always have that backup person, whether it's a family member or close family friend, you always want to have that backup person. So we only, we not only do we have the primary person, we named a backup person. So that took care of who will take care of, like who's going to physically take the children in and raise them. But then what about the assets? What happens to your assets? When there are young children, a trust is probably the best option. Now, I do want to say here, every estate plan is different and unique. There will be some provisions from, you know, trust to trust or will to will that look a lot alike, <laughs> a lot the same. Uh, but... It is tailored to your particular circumstances and your particular needs. And so to find out the best legal strategy for you and your situation, you need to talk with an estate planning lawyer of your choice to get that figured out, to find out what is best for you. In this case study example that I'm giving, we did a trust. And that was because they were young children. And, you know, you want to protect what goes to them and you want to be sure that it goes to them properly and you don't have to do a conservatorship. So we did a trust. We created a trust and we stated that the children could not inherit till they were 30 years old. What 21 year old needs to receive a huge chunk of money, right? So you, we said 30 years old. During that time, the trust can still pay their medical bills, their educational bills, and things like that, but they just can't get a big lump sum of money at 21 years old. 30 years old, I think that's reasonable. Um, that's what the family chose, so that's what we went with. And then what did we do? So we put the house into the trust. We deeded the house into the trust so that the trust can manage the house. Now, it is a revocable trust, so they can sell the house at any time. They can add more property. They can take property out. Anything they want to do with this trust, they can do. All right. And then we had to name the trustee. So we named a guardian. That's the, the person that's going to take care of the kids. But who's going to take care of the trust? Who's going to manage the trust? Who will be the person in charge of the financial side of the raising the children with the money that the parents have left? So I had to name, well, obviously the parents were the initial trustees of the trust, but then who's who's after that? And it may, it, in this case... Um, it was not the same as the guardian. Sometimes it is, but they chose to go with someone else that managed money a little bit better and could say no <laughs> to uh, any wild requests from the kids. And so we named a trust, a trustee and a backup. Again, you want to have an alternate. You want to have that backup plan. We also created wills for each parent. So each person had a will. It's called a pour over will because it catches anything that's not already in the trust and pours it over into the trust. So we had a, each parent had a will, they named a personal representative and they named a backup personal representative. And then we did a power of attorney because that's actually one of the most important documents of an estate plan. Because what happens if you are incapacitated, you're stuck in the hospital for weeks on end, who's going to manage your affairs? Who's going to pay the mortgage? Who's going to deal with the hospital and, the insurance companies and take your kids to school and get your kids to the doctor. Who's going to do all those things while you're still alive, but incapacitated or incompetent. 
<coughs> excuse me. <coughs> so we named an agent and we named an alternate agent. And also in the power of attorney, because they had minors, we named a guardian, same person or people um, to look after their children should there be a, <coughs> a situation which they were incapacitated and couldn't take care of their own kid, kids. And then we did the advanced directive for healthcare. And that is the end of life decision. So that is, do you want to have life sustaining treatment if you're terminally ill or injured or if you're permanently unconscious? That's only one part of it. The other part of advanced directive is designating who will speak on your behalf. So when you are at that point where someone has to make a decision on whether or not to uh, terminate life sustaining treatment, then you need someone that can speak on your behalf. And that's your proxy. And so they named, um, obviously themselves each other first as very as common with families with, with with spouses and then they named their um their um siblings next rather than the kids because the kids are still young so that's how we that's how I helped a, a parent a family of seven um the the parents and then five kids between the ages of seven and 19. That was a big gap there. So uh, if you have any questions and about your state plan, if you're in Alabama, you can call me at 256-361-1221. I'm Huntsville State Planning Lawyer, Tanya Hendricks. And the um, email, I'm sorry, the website is HuntsvilleEstatePlanningLawyers.com, HuntsvilleEstatePlanningLawyers.com. And you can actually go to that website and schedule to meet with me directly from that website. All right, thank you so much. I hope this has been helpful so that you can get an idea of what I do to help a family um, that with that the five kids <laughs> and um, aging in that range. You have minors and you have adults. Um, so thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, hit like and subscribe so that you can uh, be notified when the next video drops. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.